Welcome to the topic, basics of information technology risk assessment. Today we will be talking about a little bit of what is risk assessment? What are the things to expect in a general risk assessment? So risk assessment provides some crucial visibility into the potential dangers in your IT systems and data in general. And don't let's complicate this, ladies and gentlemen. So all of us have devices at home and every day we need to think about the potential risk. When you have a guest come to your home, you give them your network ID. Once they leave, we don't remove their high days, but that is a risk attack because it means they can drive around your neighborhood. If your signal is good enough, they can log into your network and they can do anything really at the end of the day. So that's a good example. So we need to constantly evaluate our risk in our environment at any point in time. So let's go straight to it. So one, we need to identify the potential risk, you know? So we need to make a list of potential risk and how it could affect your IT system and data in general. Now, once you've made that list, so it could be your house, you're saying, well, what is the risk? Somebody can just steal your router. Somebody can access your network if the password is not strong enough. Or if you don't make it um, password enabled, if you leave your network open without password, then that's a huge risk for you, right? Then we need to evaluate the risk and say, okay, what is the likelihood of this risk happening? And what is the impact of the risk to your home, for example? Then we prioritize the risk and say, okay, um, what is the risk of suddenly having um, a tornado come, God forbid, to your home and just wipe away your devices. Well, the risk is probably high because it means you'll be out of uh, connection if it's a business. But um, what is the potential likelihood of that happening? Maybe minimal chance, right? That is fair. Then what is the impact on your business? Well, maybe it's a big impact on your business. Those are the kind of decisions we are making every day. So we also need to prioritize and say, okay, we have to rank the risk in terms of severity. And because nobody has unlimited resources, it makes sense to say, well, let us prioritize which one can we take care of first before we go to the next one. So that is really the whole snapshot of what the risk assessment model is all about. What is the importance of IT risk assessment in general? You know, it's so critical for IT systems to identify those potential threats ahead of time, you know, and having a map to navigate what is the risk, the data security, and operations continuity strategy for your organization? It's not just a function of when there's an issue, but how do we continuously make our business operational when there's an issue at any point in time? Types of risk in IT in general. Of course, we can agree cybersecurity threat. Today, it's crazy. Everybody is trying to yeah, attack organization. Even Mosquito is not spared now, so it's crazy everywhere. And the intent is always to threaten the data confidentiality, the integrity and availability of those data. Confidentiality is saying, okay, can somebody go in and, you know, um, compromise the confidentiality of your data, right? Integrity is saying, can they go in and modify or make changes to it? Availability is saying, would it be available when you need it, especially for a business? That's a big deal, right? It was a lot of data breaches. It's crazy everywhere now. There is so much breach going on every day. You see it in the news all the time. That's a big deal. Hardware failures, right? It is continually operating and there is minimal failure in terms of hardware. Human errors. I mean, um, you know, believe it or not, most of the attacks we've seen is as a result of human error. Somebody click an attachment that they are not supposed to do. click, then it impacts us as a business because malware viruses spread across our network. So how do we mitigate that? Of course, we need to keep educating our staff, our members, our leadership in terms of security awareness at all points. What are the processes around risk assessment? And later we'll get into that in terms of practice and just see some real life um, scenarios. So first is risk identification identifying the list of risk you think can happen within your organization. You analyze the risk and look at it and say, well, what is the likelihood of this occurring in your business? What's the impact? Then you evaluate it and say, okay, 
let's see an analysis and see which of them do we have a risk appetite for? Which one can we be fine with and survive if it happens? Then risk treatment. It means we have an option, like we avoid the risk, mitigate the risk, we transfer the risk, like then, you know, having an insurance, all of us will have cyber insurance and make sure that at least if there is uh, an issue, we can survive it in the long term. Some tools people use in general, you know, people do risk matrices, you know, we would be using some risk matrix model whereby we go in and actually uh, manually take a look at some of those risks, give them some score based on the maturity model, and we can, you know, uh, give the risk some scorecard at the end of the day. Vulnerability assessment, there are many tools that scan your network to see if there are potential vulnerability. A good one is probably on your system. Your antiviral is constantly scanning potential vulnerability also. Risk mitigation strategies. How do we mitigate risk, right? Avoid and prevent risk. It's very smart to be proactive in terms of planning, be vigilant, and constantly shield ourselves from potential IT risk. So we need to implement security controls like ensuring right antiviral softwares are up to date. How do we control access to the systems? Then the firewalls we have to prevent malicious actors. Then we also have to have a disaster recovery plan developed in general. If there is a backup and, uh, you know, a recovery process defined in your business, it makes you much more ready for those potential threats. Then employee training must be an ongoing thing because at the end of the day, you know, uh, a trained and equipped employee is an asset to your organization to prevent cyber threats. So very important also. Some risk assessment and compliance and regulation, these are just some basic compliance out there that some of them we are familiar with. GDPR is for European member countries, very important, and it's a big one. EPA for healthcare, PCI DSS for financial sector, SOCs for publicly traded organization, GLB for financial institution, also ISO 27001. It's a good information security standard out there also. Um, risk communication and reporting, very important to have a clearly defined, clean language to explain what the issues and findings are. Sometimes graphical uh, representation is good visually, and it's important to highlight the key risk to your leadership. Then put some technical context around it for people that want to really understand it more in general. Um, what are the risks of not performing a risk assessment in general? You know, um, this is going to potentially lead to security breach in your organization. That's a big one. You know, it's um, important because risk assessment helps you to proactively identify threats, vulnerabilities in your business ahead of time. And another big one, continuous risk assessment. Every time keep assessing the risk. It's like your own front, we can agree. We can always continuously assess the risk or any threat within the home front. Am I looking at the doors? Are they locked? Do we have cameras in place? Are we making sure we have all the mechanism to prevent unauthorized actors to come into your home? It's the same concept. All right. And thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you in the next class. Thank you.